Hey guys, welcome to a new video. Today we're going to talk about how to play Petrov defense. We're going to see main lines and main ideas and a general view about this famous variation. So uh, we have Petrov defense after e4, e5, knight f3, and then here knight f6. Observe that we don't defend the bond on e5 with knight c6. Instead of that, we counterattack in white center. So we're trying to get this bond. When we play Petrov defense, our opponent can try three main systems. So we're going to talk about the three systems they can play, but also I want to highlight a gambit they can try. So, you know, you have some idea just in case your opponent tries that gambit. So one of the three main systems is going to be D4, and this is what they call Steinitz attack. After D4, the best move for black is going to be Knight takes E4. And usually they will develop the bishop first before they capture the pawn on e5 so they should develop and get a tempo here but we can defend also developing with d5 at this point they can capture on e5 with either pawn or knight but well actually the main line and the best move is going to be knight takes pawn and uh, there are some ways to play as black here but bishop d6 is very normal and very simple and uh, usually white castles at this point and we can play here knight d7 trying to get rid of white's central knight. After knight d7, they should trade and then we play bishop takes d7. In general, we are going to have a very uh, playable mid game. Maybe white is, is going to be a little better. Just make sure you castle as soon as possible and observe you, we have good pieces over here like the two bishops and also the knight in the center. So that's a tiny attack. Uh, the other line is when the other two systems are here when they play knight takes e5. Uh, here we cannot capture the pawn directly because white is playing queen in two and we are going to be in trouble with the knight and the king on the same line. So we should play d6 first. And uh, I'm going to show you the gambit they can try. This is what they call Cochrane Gambit and it is this knight takes f7. Well, uh, the idea here is that they are controlling the center very soon. Of course, they are developing the bishop probably over d3 and once they castle, there will be breaks over e5 and sometimes there might be some problem over the diagonal. So white can get some small compensation here, some interesting compensation here for uh, the sacrifice, but well, in general, it's going to be very playable. Uh, Cochrane Gambit is not the most popular way to play against Petrov. So, you know, the idea is that you just capture the knight. Uh, there are some ways to play, but probably bishop e7 and bring your rook over here so you can hide your king very quickly is going to be the plan. As I was saying, white is getting some compensation, but knight of three is going to be main line here. We capture the pawn on e4, and here we have the two alternatives with the other two systems white can try. One system is going to be knight c3, and this is what we call Nimsawish attack. After knight c3, we should capture there on c3. They should capture with the d-pawn so they can develop very quickly. And, uh, well, at this point, we can continue with bishop e7. They can play either bishop e3 or bishop e4. But bishop f4 is probably a little slightly better. And um, usually they will play queen d2 and they will try to castle queen side. Sometimes they can also castle king side, but I think uh, over the queen side is going to be a little more common. Here we have many ways to play. Uh, I'm just going to say a line here, knight d7, for example. And uh, after queen d2, you can play knight c5. The knight is going to be fine there on c5. It's protected, but also it's controlling many squares all over the board and also on uh, the queen side. So that's Nimsawish attack when they play knight c3. The other line is when they play d4. This is the classical attack. It's like the main line in Petrov, like the most popular way to face Petrov defense. After d4, we will play d5. And here they should play bishop d3. And we have two main alternatives here, bishop e7 or bishop d6. Also, we can play knight c6 first and then bishop e7 later. It's going to be the same as bishop e7 directly. But actually, I think the best line is going to be bishop d6 here. It's a little more, I don't think it's like better, but it's a little more dynamic and probably a little more interesting. So bishop d6 is the line we're going to see here. Uh, white castles, weak castle as well here. And uh, usually they will play c4 here. This is the, the main line. It's the most important move here. The idea is that we have the knight on e4 and uh, they will try to fight that knight uh, very often and very strongly. So they are just uh, attacking the base of the knight here. Also, they are attacking our central pawn. 
So that's the plan. Here we can play C6. And in general, this is going to be a very interesting melee game. Maybe white is slightly better. The main idea is that we want to keep that knight in the center as long as possible. And uh, of course, white is going to try to get rid of that knight. They have moves like knight c3, rook e1, sometimes queen c2. In general, they will be able to get rid of our knight in the center. That can happen very often. And then we should say they are slightly better, but only that, only slightly better for white is going to be very playable and very interesting almost always. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments. If you want to learn how to play Petrov Defense in detail with examples about Masters games and much more information, check out this interesting video over here. I'm sure you will enjoy it and it will help you a lot. Thank you so much guys. Like, subscribe. See you on the next.